buddy and me Together in sunshine or rain Prairie pals, prairie pals My buddy and me Together we ride o'er the plain Mitchell ought to be getting here. He's got to find out which way that payroll wagon's coming this time. Hankstone ain't taking no chances after the last two holdups. And we're home, home on the range. Prairie pals, my buddy and me. Not bad, fellas. How's it feel to be on the other side of the fence? Well, it beats working for a living any day. You know, riding for the law is a thankless job. Look what happened to Art and me. Yeah, we were framed. That's what you two galoots say. Why alibi to Ed and me? Who's alibi? Bill and I just got a deal when we was kicked out of the service, that's all. We're just waiting our time so we can settle that score. They took the lower road. We'll have to head them over the canyon. Come on. Well, it looks like another wild goose chase, boys. Stoner must have sent that wagon by the other road. Probably won't do much good, but we can cut through the canyon on the way back to town. Come on. They're coming. I know that payroll. Mr. Sheriff, I tail it out of here and meet me at the regular place. Where have you two been picking wildflowers? We've been playing hide and seek with that sheriff, Miss Posse. Here you are. Here's your share, Bill. Thanks. We'd have done better if we'd have busted open a piggy bag. What do you think we held up? The mint? That's just it. I'm getting fed up with this penny ante stuff. Raiding ranches, rustling cattle, holding up two bit payrolls. Bill and me ain't bandits. We joined this outfit to cut in on this big gold deal you've been promising us. Well, don't worry. You'll cut in on it when everything is all set. All you have to worry about is getting rid of the gold when the time comes. Yeah, but where are you going to get it? There ain't no gold mines in this part of the country. Well, gold don't always have to come out of mines. You ain't uh, figuring on holding up a shipment of bullion, are you? Yeah, how about it, Mitchell? Me and Ed are interested, too. That goes for me, too. That's right. When is this big deal coming off? Now, listen. You all don't have to worry. I never gave you a bum steer. We're going to have money to burn. I think it's time that we raid Hank Stoner. He's been operating on borrowed money. This last hold-up will just about break him. You think a raid will scare him off his ranch? Well, if you don't leave after you burn him out, you know what to do. You mean like we took care of Len Williams? Right. As soon as we get hold of a few more of these ranches, we'll be ready to start operating. What are you going to do about Arden Bell? I'm worried about 
Nothing. They've proven themselves. Besides, they're in it as deep as we are. I know. They keep asking me more questions than I can ask. About what? Well, why we're raiding the ranches and where the gold's coming from. You ain't spilled any beans, have you? I mean, about the Vanadium War? No, none of the gang know about that. Well, you keep stringing the boys along. Tell them nothing. If anybody finds out that there's any Vanadium ore in this part of the country, they might put two and two together and get something besides four. How is Wainwright doing? Well, I'm going to take a ride over there tonight to see if everything is all right. Something I can do for you, mister? Maybe. Name's Lee Powell. Oh, glad to know you, Marshal Powell. Heard a lot about you. Sit down. Thanks. What brings you to Elkhorn? Oh, nothing very much. Just a little business matter. Well, if I can help you, just say the word. Just looking for a man named Wainwright. Last reported around this territory. Wainwright? Never heard of him. Noted scientist discovers method to manufacture gold from vanadium ore. And Wainwright is this scientist? Can't say that I ever saw him. Does the law want him for something? No, just missing a few weeks. Family a little bit anxious. Oh, I suppose I got the usual circular here regarding his disappearance, but I've been so busy chasing outlaws I haven't had a chance to do anything else. So you see, I've had my hand laws. Why, this looks like a peaceful community. Used to be, yes. But a regular epidemic of crime broke out here a few weeks ago. Any idea what's behind it? Seems like there's a campaign to run the ranchers off of their property. Land valuable around here? No, not especially. Ranchers just been making a living. Any mineral deposits been found on it? I believe there was a geologist come up here several years ago to go over the property. I don't think he found anything worth mining. Is there any other reason why somebody would want these ranches? I can't figure it out. Unless the outlaws have decided to run all the decent folks out and just take over the community. How about these outlaws? You caught up with any of them lately? Yeah. Huh. The faster I put them in jail, though, they break out. How about this Shannon? Well, his games are crooked, I know, but outside of that, I haven't been able to pin in on him. Well, Sheriff, it looks to me like that saloon's a pretty good place to pick up some information. I think I'll just drift around and see what I can find out. <laughs> Sit down, I want to talk to you. I don't see how you can find the time. You're such a busy man. What do you fellows do when you're not hanging around here? Well, uh, we're in on a big business deal. Hey, look at this. Go ahead and buy yourself a house of lot. Gee, you're kind of generous, aren't you? There's more where that came from, and then some. Well, it looks like the depression's over. How about letting me in on your secret? Where are you going to get all that money? I'd be interested in that kind of a business myself. Who wouldn't? The only thing bigger than this deal is the mitt in Denver. But isn't that where they keep all the gold? Sure. You string along with me, baby, and the mitt won't have a thing on us. What are you doing snooping around this part of the country? Just looking for a couple of coyotes. Yeah? Well, take a good look while you're at it. The law ain't got nothing on me and Bill. And maybe the law hasn't, but this is a personal matter. You remember Jack Arnold? Jack Arnold. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, Jack Arnold's a good friend of mine. If you speak of that little deal down in Texas, that's been settled. Yeah, maybe for you and Bill, but not for Arnold. He's facing a stiff rap for that little job. You two boys are the only ones that can save him. Well, that ain't no skin off our noses. No. Sure, you two got off easy. But there's still such a thing as honor. Now, if you don't want to come along willingly, I'll see that you have an escort. How about it? 
Say, is that Marshal Powell? Yeah. But he ain't got no right coming in here and picking a fight with one of our boys. Play. Fight it out. I want to see just what happened. Taking you over to the jail for safekeeping. It's your hat and let's go. Maybe I was wrong about Artonville. You heard what he said. That train leaves at 12 o'clock tonight. Yeah? Well, Artonville won't be on it. <laughs> Boys, Uncle Lloyd, did we put that one over? I bet you that Mitchell would have us out of here in nothing flat. Well, listen, boys, this is no tea party, and we got to talk fast. Bill, why'd you send for me? I thought you and Art were in solid with the outlaws. Well, we are, Lee, but we run up against a blank wall. A few holdups, raids on the ranches. Another gang seems to know what it's all about, except Mitchell. How about him? Can't you get anything out of him? No, he's too cagey. And we won't be able to get anything on until he finds out what the deal is. However, he did drop a couple of things about the big boss, but uh, we've never been able to find out who he is. All right, do you think they're really calling Wayne Wright? Well, these raids started right after he disappeared. Lee, there seems to be a campaign to drive out the ranchers. Now, I've got a hunch there's a tie-up between the two. Well, we're going to have to work this from a different angle. If we can keep Mitchell and his gang from making any more of those raids, we might be able to force them out in the open. You two boys keep your eyes peeled. If you stumble on anything, well, let me know. You got anything planned, Lee? Yep. I'm gonna ride out and talk to some of the ranchers. Taking a busman's holiday? Well, if I didn't work, I'd go crazy shut up in here. I've reduced the ore samples you brought me to concentrate. Where'd you find out? The big vein is on the Stoner Ranch. Though the samples from the other ranches have considerable vanadium ore, not in the quantity I found in the Stoner sample. Well, I'll be ready to start operating very soon now. And you'd better produce a rev. I'll keep my end of the bargain, though I'm not counting on you keeping yours. I promise to let you out of here as soon as you start manufacturing some of this gold for me. Anything you want? I made a list of the chemicals I'll need. You'll have to order them from the Eastern Chemical Company. The address is on that paper. I'll get the order off tonight. You'll be sorry. You'll be sorry, you'll be sorry that you went away, dear, when you're lonely, by only, you'll be longing to be back again. You'll remember all the joys we had, and I know that someday you feel sad, you feel sorry, oh, so sorry. You'll be longing to be back again. You'll be sorry, oh so sorry. You'll be sorry that you went away, dear. When you're lonely, by your only, you'll be longing to be back again. You remember all the joys we had. And I know that someday you'll feel sad. You'll feel so sorry, 
I'm so sorry You'll be longing to be back again You can't stand by helplessly and let these outlaws drive you from your homes. Now, your only chance is to band together, protect your property with armed resistance if necessary. Now, I'm not in favor of lynch law or mob rule, but this is different. You men are fighting for everything you own. Yeah, but we don't know where they're going to strike next. And none of us wants to leave our homes unguarded. No, that's no, right. That's no, that's right. That's right. Now, if you men will back me, I'll represent you and we'll put an end to this lawlessness. How about it, men? Shall we authorize Mr. Powell to represent us? Well, I think I think right. Right. All right. I'll get word to you as soon as I can when I find out where the Raiders are going to strike next. And I think we can arrange a little surprise party for them. Mark Davis or Bill Boyd around? I thought you'd had him in jail. For your information, they broke out of jail last night. It looks like they had some help. Well, why bother me with your troubles? You better turn in that badge if you can't hold on to your prisoner. I'll hold on him the next time. There won't be any next time. If I were you, I'd leave town and forget all about it. I prefer to stick around. Maybe I can dig up something that law will be interested in. And I'm not particular whose toes I step on. I just overheard Mitchell's suggestion. I think it's a good one. Besides, I I don't think you're going to find the climate in Elkhorn very healthy. It's nothing the matter with my health. Any of you are worried and think I need a doctor, send him up to room 9 at the Majestic Hotel. Mitchell, the next time you send somebody over to see me, have them use the door. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I just had a visitor in my room. The fellow was in such a hurry to leave, he forgot his hat. I thought maybe he might be a friend of yours. Why, none of my boys left the saloon all evening. Incidentally, I've decided not to take the boys back to Texas with me. That is right now. I think they need a little more persuading. I'm going to stick around Elkhorn until they see things my way. Well, I'm afraid you're going to have a long visit. Chances are you won't like it. It's a matter of opinion. See, the ranchers have just hired me to help stop the lawlessness in this town. So, um, I'll be hanging around for a while. 
You know, I'm going to get that star toad and bloodhound the first chance I get. Well, if he gets too nosy, you're going to get that chance. You know, uh, I wonder how Powell and the ranchers are going to enjoy the housewarming I'm giving Hank Stoner this evening. Maybe I should have sent him a special invitation. Ugh. All right, I'm warned to enough. Let's hit the hay. Yeah, let's do. Wait a minute. You boys are turning in kind of early, aren't you? Thought you might like to take a ride with me and the gang. Nothing to do it. Bill and me are fed up with this penny and stuff. Now, look, we made a bargain with you to get rid of that loop when you made that big gold deal, and that's all. In the meantime, if you want to go ahead and set the world on fire, just go right ahead. Bill and I are tired. We're going to bed. Yeah. Well, good night, boy. Good night. Hank Stoner's place. I'll be right with you. Hide those horses on the edge of the clearing. Mr. Stoner, it's Lee Powell. Mr. Stoner, the outlaws are coming. You better hurry and round up the ranchers. My two pals and I will try to hold them off till you get back. Good, come on in. Mr. Stoner, you better get those ranchers here as soon as you possibly can. Yes, sir. Oh, Bill, Art and I are covering the front. You take that kitchen window. Nobody home. Well, we'll fix a warm welcome for Hank Stoner when he gets back. Set fire to the barn and the haystacks. I'll take care of the house. Let him have it. Here comes Stoner and his men now. Let's hit leather.
All right, come on back. I want you fellows to hang on to these pole cats for me. Oh, not that I don't trust the sheriff, but his jail's just an old tin can. We'll see if the Mavericks don't get away. Have you got any place to hide them out? Yeah. Crockett's got an old shack on his place. We can leave him in there and put a couple of the boys on guard. Good. We'll be adding to the collection from time to time. The marshal and the ranchers were laying an ambush for us. We didn't have a chance. Well, another slip up like that, and I'll be hiring some gunslingers who ain't afraid of their own shadows. Now look, I've recorded titles to both the Williams and Pine ranches, but the big vein of war crosses here, and that's on Stoner's ranch. Now I have got to have that property before I can start operating. What are you going to do about the Nose and Marshal? Pull a few raids on some of the other ranches. That'll throw Powell off. Then you can come back to Stoner later.
make you more work for the laundryman, stranger. Oh, Morse code. Are you secret agent number 13? <laughs> oh, I was just writing a note to remind me of something. Sort of a bad habit of talking to yourself. I think a good customer like you deserves a nice, clean table for Oh, here, let me help you. Oh, I'm sorry. Promise you help me, it won't happen again. I don't think Mitchell and his little playmates like the way you comb your hair. Mister, if you've got a horse, you'd better get on it. Thanks for reminding me. I do have a little business to take care of. I'm going to take care of the tablecloth, too. How about another song, boys? Yeah. yeah. Oh, some other time, folks. It's late. We're getting tired. Come on, Art. Hey, uh, what's the matter with you, fellas? You got sleeping sickness or something? Mm, I wish a little tired, I guess, Mitchell. Thought you might change your mind. Come along with me and the boys. A little short of men. We're setting in on the big deal, and that's all. Come on, Bill. Those ranchers are being tipped off ahead of time. Powell's is pretty smart under it, but I can't figure out how he's working. Yeah. Don't suppose Art and Bill are playing a double barrel game, do you? No. As much as I mistrust them, it'd have been impossible for them to have gotten word to Powell. They were right here in the saloon all evening. Or were they? I found out at the recording office this morning that A. Shannon has filed deeds to all the abandoned ranches. I've got a hunch his mortgages are phony. Well, that proves that he's the army behind all these raids. Why don't you arrest him and Mitchell? Yeah, Art and me have enough evidence to convict a whole bunch. Yes, but that doesn't tell us where Wainwright is. We've got to let Shannon keep on operating until we locate that hideout. That's right. If we don't, we'll probably never find Wainwright alive. Keep a closer tab on Mitchell. You may still find out something there. You two waddies better get back to that saloon before Mitchell thinks you've died in your sleep. What are you going to do, Lee? I'm going to pay a visit to Shannon's office. Later, when he isn't there. So, the ranchers were laying for you again. <laughs> what were you doing, chasing jackrabbits? I tell you, Shannon... Oh, I'm, I'm fed up with your alibis. I want action. Not excuses. Wainwright's going to start manufacturing gold for us as soon as the chemicals get here. But I've got to have that vanadium ore on Stoner's ranch. And it's up to you to get it. That Texas Marshal's the one that's coming up the work. Well, then get Powell out of the way. Yeah, I still think Art and Bill are tipping him off. Yes, and I think that you're trying to alibi your own failures. All right. Now, here. You can settle this thing once and for all. 
Send Art to get Powell. That will prove whether he's on the level or not. If they're not, you know what to do. Now go ahead. This is a pleasant surprise. I didn't think I'd be having a date with you so soon. Why, well, I was just looking for something I lost in here. I sort of figured that out for myself. Think you'll find it in Shannon's papers? Oh, those? Why, I was just curious. Little girls like you should be careful how they run around in the dark alone. That goes for little boys, too. Yeah, I know, but I've been here long enough to know that we're probably looking for the same thing. And we'll both save time if we look together. Take that side to the desk. Now, you three are going to lay for Powell in his room tonight. We've got to get rid of that hombre before he upsets the apple cart. And Davis, here's the chance you've been asking for. But I'm going to send Blair and Crandall along with you just to make sure you don't go to sleep on the job. Well, don't worry. I'll take care of everything. I hope. Wait a minute, fellas. We ain't gonna get anywhere rushing into this like a bunch of low-code steer. Let's plan it out. We don't need no plan. Mitchell told us to wait for Pownie's room and work him over, and that's where we're going, right now. Something? I think so. This is a way bill for a shipment of chemicals. Shannon wouldn't be using these here in the saloon. These chemicals are used for processing ore. How do you know so much about this? Well, I used to work for a chemist. And that chemist was your father, wasn't he? Miss Wainwright. You're right, Marshal Powell. You and I are both looking for the same thing. That way bill is the first definite clue I've been able to find to connect Shannon with my father's disappearance. They'll need these chemicals before they can start manufacturing synthetic gold. Say, this shipment will arrive tomorrow or the next day. I've got a hunch that Shannon's going to lead me right to that hideout. Or I think we'll find your father. Oh, I hope so.
Now look, Wainwright, things ain't worked out the way I figured. I may have to change my plan. You've got to give me that formula. I'd be signing my own death warrant if I did. You've no intention of letting me leave here alive. If I should disclose that formula to anyone, it would cause a national disaster. With the market flooded with synthetic gold, the entire money system of the world would be destroyed. Well, I ain't worried about the rest of the world as long as I get mine. And I'm going to get it, understand? Wainwright, you've got to give me that formula. Who's this? My daughter. Your daughter? And my bribes work the same as yours. The clerk at the recording office admitted that those mortgages and deeds you filed were faked. Prove it. That might be a little bit difficult to deal with the fact that Jim Pine and Len Williams are dead. And that's another charge you'll answer to. Murder. <laughs> Charging me with murder and convicting me are two different things. I'll take that chance. You're coming along with me. That tin badge of yours don't carry any authority around here. There's enough authority back of it to put a rope around your neck. Now get moving. Oh, uh, do you mind if I have a smoke? No, go ahead. I wouldn't try that if I were you. Get moving. Oh, well, uh, we'll use the private exit just in case some of the boys out there might want to give you a farewell party. on your horse. You and I are going for a little ride. But the jail is just down the street. I'm not taking you to jail. Ranchers got a little matter they want to discuss with you. Oh, I know. You've got to take me to jail and arrest me, according to law. Mob rule don't go around here. Well, don't worry about your neck. That is for the time being. I'm saving that for a man of state's prison. Now get mounted. Wait a minute. What's the big idea? Well, you come and go. Shannon yeah, told us to get this stuff out the hideout. Yeah, but I'm busy. Yeah, and he said you were to come along, too. Me? Yeah, and he also said for us to get out of town pronto before anybody sees it. Well, all right.
prairie moon, you're shining bright out upon the plains tonight. Love light in your glow. I want you to know. That tells a tale of love. Prairie moon, cast your light on the prairie tonight. You're a part of my heart, prairie Now, I got a hunch you two polecats are up to something. And I'm not taking any chances till I find out what it is. What's the matter with you? You going loco? Now, both of you climb down out of the seat and let's find out what's so interesting about the back of this wagon. Say, can't we look at the scenery without you getting suspicious? Now, look, we got to hurry. Shannon gave us orders. I'm Somebody. giving the orders now. Climb down. All right, get around the back. So you two folk cats thought you'd put in something over on me, huh? Well, you're not so smart. The hideout's a long way from here, and that's where you're going, but you're not coming back alive. Now, dump that sack in the brush. Now, the two of you get back in that seat so I can keep an eye on you. Get going. Here. Try to escape. Shannon will head right straight for that hideout. All right, I'll round up the ranchers and hightail it for Crockett's shack. I'll be waiting for you where the trail leaves off. Follow Shannon from there. Right. Stoner, I understand you're holding A. Shannon and some of his men prisoners here. Uh, Marshal Powell told us to hold him for him. Well, you can't take the law in your hands that way. I'm going to take those outlaws with me back to jail. All right, Sheriff. They're your prisoners. 
Now is the time to make a break for it. Cover the door. So Shannon was holding out on me. I didn't expect to have you visit our little summer resort. See, you're still waiting on tables, Miss Wainwright. Why don't you feed our guests? They must be hungry. I don't believe I want anything to eat. Thank you, Betty. Uh, neither do I. A condemned man always gets his last meal. You better go ahead and eat because you won't have another chance. You know, I'm just waiting for Shannon to show up so I can prove to him that I was right about you two. Yeah, well, I still don't want to eat. Looking at you kind of spoils my appetite. Uh, you don't mind knowing Bill and I sing a little song, do you? Yeah, something to kind of while away the time while we wait for Shannon to show up. No, go right ahead. But you better make it a funeral dirge because you'll be needing one before long. Farewell, my darling. I've got to leave you. Farewell, my darling. Just hope and pray that our sad parting won't be forever. Think of me, darling, while I'm away. I won't be long, dear. I'll be returned. Back in your arms, dear, I'll always stay. You know I love you, so don't you worry. Think of me, darling, while I'm away. Think of me only, remember, darling, I will be lonely both night and day. You are a part of my lonely heart, love. Think of me, darling. While I'm away. You know, you boys are not bad. Can't understand what's keeping Shannon. I want him to join me in the pleasure of working you two over. Well, I'm sorry. We can't wait. peace when they stand trial. Let's get them out of here. I don't know how we'll ever thank you for what you've done for us. I wish you'd accept our invitation to visit us in the East. Well, if anyone could persuade us, Miss Sylvia, it'd be you, but the boys and I are riding the other direction. Are you sure you won't change your mind? Sorry, but maybe we'll meet again sometime. Goodbye until then, boys. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye and good luck.
Ride, there's a lonely ride.